Hey, it's LSFT here again today. Today we're here to talk about charging customizations. So this is, applies to the NX450H Plus uh, of the plug-in hybrid because that's the only vehicle that can actually put the plug-in. So one thing that you need to do is you go to the gear and you go to the vehicle customize. And right here, you, there's an option called charging. So under here, you, you can see that the charging current, uh, right now it's set to max. You have the option to change it to 16 amps or 8 amps. The 6.6 .6 kilowatt charger will allow you to show the 16 amp selection. If not, you will not be able to see that option. It gets a little bit confusing because when you look at the manual, and the manual says 12 amps, 16 amps, and 32 amps. But then in the selection, you only see max, 16 amps, and 8 amps. So why does that? Like, what does that really mean? Before we dive into that question, let's look at the details of what's in the manual. So the home source, power source, is really your regular plug for 120 volts. This is really more for the North American market because in other places um, it's 240 volts as a home power source. Using that it will charge at a 12 amp current and it'll take approximately 12 hours to fully charge the vehicle. And when you're using a 240 volt uh, AC adapter, so um, usually the dryer port, uh, the dryer plug that you have in, in your home, you, it can charge at 16 amps for four and a half hours and 32 amps for two and a half hours. So again, the 32 amps is only when you have the 6.6 .6 kilowatt charger. And if you only had the 3.5 kilowatt charger, then you can only charge at maximum 16 amps. You have to keep in mind that these are maximum charge currents and also an approximate time so it, you could charge a little bit longer due to weather and all the other conditions. <laughs> it gets a little bit more complex when you talk about the Europe market, the European market, and there are two different home source power sources. So uh, the countries that are, uh, are not France, Finland, and Switzerland uses an AC 230 volts and their default charging is 10 amps and it takes about seven and a half hours to fully charge. For France, Finland, and Switzerland, it's also 230 volts, but their charge is only at eight amps, and it'll take approximately nine hours to fully charge. So then when you look at the AC charger, um, cars that have 3.5 kilowatt, uh, the max charge is 16 amps, and it takes approximately five hours to fully charge. And when you look at the cars with the 6.6 .6 kilowatt, then you can max charge at 32 amps, and it'll take approximately two and a half hours to fully charge. So for the Australian and the New Zealand market, they have something a little different. If you are part of their Encore Platinum, uh, you would actually get a complimentary home charger installed at home. And that is why in their manual, it only shows 230 volts, 32 amps charging at a 2.5 hours. I believe if you do, don't have the home charger, it will be similar to the 10 amp, 230 volt, and it'll take seven and a half hours to charge in Australia. So we now go back to that question. Why does this say max 16 amps and eight amps? While when you look at the manuals around the world, they're different. So what I would say is the max selection is similar to what you have in the manual. If you have 240 volts and you have a 32 amp charging capability, then max will be the best option. But there will be scenarios where you have a 32 amp and there are other devices that are plugged into that circuit. So when you plug it in and it trips, then what you'll need to do is you downgrade that charging so that you, you tell the car to only drag 16 amps and not the full 32 amps. In similar situations, like in the North American market where you have the standard home plug, which is standard at 15 amps, 
you may have other devices that's plugged in and that's dragging already current and you cannot fully charge at 12 amps. So what you'll need to do is downgrade that and make it 8 amps so that you will not trip the circuit. I am no electrician, but I've been reading around and understanding, trying to understand why uh, like we can only charge at a max of 12 amps and I have a 15 amp circuit. How come I cannot do that? So there is an 80% rule. So when you look at the, the, the screen now, uh, on a typical 15 amp circuit, if you take 80% of that, then it's a 12 amp um, charging capability, which is really more the North American standard 120 volt plug. Then when you look at um, 16 amps, but you have a 20 amp circuit. So when you use a 20 amp circuit, 80% of that would give you a 16 amp charging capability. Then when you look at the 240 volts, or like where you have like the 32 amp, don't look at it with, oh, I have a 30 amp uh, uh, plug, you cannot charge at 32 amps. You will at least need a minimum of a 40 amp circuit in order to get the full 32 amp charging capability, which is really the 80% of 40. Hopefully that will give you some insights of um, what to use and what is your maximum capacity when you do your charging. Following this 80% guide, you will unlikely trip your your circuit and it's just a little bit safer. Now let's get back to the charging settings. After you made your selection, you press OK. Now next to the connector lock. So under the connector lock there is the first option is auto lock. So auto lock is a default setting and what happens is when you plug in the charger, it will automatically lock and it will not unlock until you unlock your vehicle. The next option is auto lock and unlock. So what that does is, it will, when you plug in your connector, it would automatically lock and then when the charging is complete, it would automatically unlock. So there's, and then you can just unplug it without having to unlock your vehicle. And the last option is off, which means it will not lock at all. So I'm going to select it back to the default and press OK. So the last two options is battery cooling and battery warming. So what do these two options do? So the cooling is used really when it's hot outside. It's summer months and uh, it's temperature is warm or you've driven the car a lot and the batteries are warm. So what this will do is it will use the AC to cool down the battery packs before it starts charging and keep its performance so that it, you have the, the most optimal charging uh, performance. And then the battery warming is the opposite. In the winter months when it's cold outside, uh, it, it, it is a lot harder for the vehicle to charge when it's in cold uh, situations. So what the battery will have to do is warm up the, the batteries so that it will start charging and it will be the most optimal charging situation. One thing to note is the battery cooling will not operate when your charging voltage is only 120 volts. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to comment, like, share, and most importantly subscribe. You can also press that bell icon to get alerted when new videos are out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time. Cheers.